space weather today, CME has opened cracks in Earth's magnetosphere. Solar wind is pouring through gaps to spark a G1-class geomagnetic storm. This is space weather today. Huge outbreak of naughty lucent clouds as well. This is on space weather. I'll leave a link below for you for this. We should be alert for the Lunar X. Have you seen a Lunar X? Once a month when the sun rises over crater Werner in the moon's southern hemisphere, the sunlight floods the region's high terrain and makes a luminous crisscross shape. The X is due to appear on Sunday, June 9, between 20.4 hours and 22.4 Pacific daylight. There's also a huge break of nautilucent clouds. Last night, a huge outbreak of nautilucent clouds, NLC clouds, occurred as tendrils of frosted meteor smoke were sighted in Europe and the USA as far south as Oregon, Utah. And what a surprise, Andrew Robb of Beaverton, Oregon said, it's been almost 10 years since I've seen LLCs here in Oregon and they're back, he says. And he took a picture of them. Rob took the picture here just after sunset, June 8th. NLC stretched the length of the whole horizon, he says. Their rippling waves and other structures were fascinating. LLCs are Earth's highest clouds, seeded by meteorites. They float at the edge of the space more than 80 kilometers above planets, the planet's surface. The clouds are very cold and filled with icy crystals, tiny ice crystals. Now when sunbeams hit those crystals, they glow electric blue. Normally NLCs are confined to polar regions, but this year people are seeing them at middle latitudes as well. Last night alone the clouds appeared in Utah, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Washington, Montana, Iowa, Oregon, and even Maine. Electric blue ripples also blanketed much of northern to central Europe as well. This was uh, what sunrise over Poland looked like, just about the same. Uh, now, why are nautilucent clouds suddenly so bright? Previous studies showed that nautilucent clouds sometimes intensify during solar storms. Solar minimum conditions are in effect now, as the sun has been without spots for 21 consecutive days a situation that may favor the frosting of meteor smoke high above the Earth. At present, no one can predict exactly when nautilucent clouds will appear. Last night's display suggests that more of the clouds may be in the offing even at mid-latitudes. Observing tips are look west 30 to 60 degrees, 30 to 60 minutes, that is, after sunset, when the sun has dipped below the horizon. If you see luminous blue-white tendrils spreading across the sky, then that means you may have spotted nautilucent clouds. And we also had an unexpected CME impact. Saturday, June 8th, a dense and strongly magnetized cloud of plasma hit the Earth's magnetic field. It was apparently the flank of a coronal mass ejection of CME. The solar storm cloud left the sun with little fanfare June 3rd, and it took, it went quite slowly. Five days is quite slow. Coronagraphs on NASA's Stereo A spacecraft barely detected it. The slow-moving CME took about five days, well, actually more than five days to cross the Sun-Earth divide. Typically, CMEs cross the same distance in half that time. Despite its slow velocity, the CME was geo-effective. Strong south-pointing magnetic fields inside the CME opened cracks in our Earth's magnetosphere. Solar wind poured through the, gra the gaps to spark a G1-class geomagnetic storm on June 8th. The effects of the CME are subsiding now, and no further storms are expected this weekend. Now, what is a G1-class storm? It means that uh, the impacts mean that power systems, weak power grid fluctuations can occur, spacecraft operations, minor impact on satellite operations are possible. Other systems, migratory animals, are affected at this in higher levels. Aurora is commonly visible at high altitudes. 
northern Michigan and Maine, for example. We had four fireballs coming in today. Also, the near-Earth asteroids, we have 1,983 potentially hazardous asteroids. The next one coming up will be June 16th at uh, distance of 4.1 LD. Lunar distances, diameter is 35 meters. Cosmic rays can seed clouds, trigger lightnings, and penetrate commercial airplanes. We're talking about the stratospheric radiation. It's uh, decreased about 25% in five years, 24%, 23% in five years. I write it up to 25%. That's very, very significant, as you can imagine. Space weather balloons track this stratospheric radiation. The balloons are equipped with radiation sensors that detect cosmic rays, a surprising down-to-earth form of space weather. Cosmic rays can seed clouds, trigger lightning, and penetrate even commercial airplanes. Also, there are studies linking cosmic rays with cardiac arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death in the general population. Our latest measurements show that cosmic rays are intensifying with an increase of more than 18% from 2015 to uh, 2018. The data points to uh, a peak in the Renninger Fodser Maximum, which lies about 67,000 feet above central California. When cosmic rays crash into Earth's atmosphere, they produce a spray of secondary particles that's most intense at the entrance to the stratosphere. En route to the stratosphere, our sensors also pass through aviation altitudes. And uh, the plot shows that the rates are expressed as multitudes of sea level. For instance, if we see that boarding a plane that flies at 25,000 feet exposes passengers to doses 10 times higher than sea level, at 40,000 feet, the multiplier is close to 50, 50 times that of sea level. So it really goes up as you go up in the height. The radiation centers on board helium balloons detected X-rays and gamma rays in the energy range of 10 keV to 20 MeV. These energies span the range of medical X-ray machines and airport security scanners. Now why are cosmic rays intensifying? The main reason is the sun. Solar storm clouds such as coronal mass ejections, CMEs, sweep aside the cosmic rays when they pass and hit the Earth. But during solar, as during solar maximum, CMEs are abundant and cosmic rays are held at bay. Now, though, the solar cycle is swinging towards solar minimum, and that allows cosmic rays to return to Earth. Another reason could be the weakening of Earth's magnetic field. The magnetic field helps protect us from deep space radiation. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on 
not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.